unacceptable. All right, I waited for this one until the initial flush of everybody feeling like they were required to do this review was over and done with. You know, that's... <laughs> But this, this is how we're not good at the content game. Wait, welcome to Whiskey just, Ball. I mean, I, because we ball, missed the, the curve of like really being on it by like a month. No, that, because I, I couldn't get my hands they, on it. I don't think we've ever been on the on it curve. You no, know, we did with the um, when we uh, did the uh, Japanese whiskey with the main, faint big guy with a bunch of followers. That's his name. Oh. Uh, PewDiePie. Yeah. Yeah, that was the only time. No, no, no I'm once. talking about like brands. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're talking about that one time where I saw Pewds do a whiskey video. Like, let's go. We were at lunch. I was like, hey, Daniel, we got 24 hours if you really want to make the most out of this. Yeah. Like, All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. No, that was like forever ago. Yeah. Um, there's been the the Irish guy that punches people. Yeah, yeah, Proper 12. Proper 12. Is, and yeah. then there's been like a bunch of brand releases. I think we're way behind the curve. Walking Dead one time walk. sent us some stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It was a cool backpack. I don't know if we ever did anything. No, we never shot anything with it. I, we didn't ask for it either. Yeah. But. And then there was, uh, we should probably need to do a review of that someday. The Walking Dead's going to be off the air by the time we get to that. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then like there was like the episode. Dragon Show, the Game of Thrones. Yeah. I think we were kind of really, I think we just spaced those out. We did space them out, yeah. We're just not on, we don't, you know what it is? I'll spin it. We don't chase the fads. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Obviously, I'm wearing overalls. Right. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I bought this bottle. Yeah. A while ago, and uh, and just waited for a little bit because we had so many other things that we were trying to knock out. But this is Uncle Nearest, eighteen fifty six. You know what that is? What that is a bottle that I ordered just as a test bottle whenever we were doing um, yeah reserve bar. You still have it down in your office, right? Oh well, about half of it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, because whenever we do things on our other channel, mm -hmm. we always test to make sure we enjoy the product or service, and that yeah. was one of the bottles I got as a test bottle. Yeah. So. The story, the shortest version that I can come up with, right? Yeah. Is way back in the day, there was a guy, Dan Cole, who was a preacher. Okay. And he had a farm, and one of his slaves was mm -hmm. named Nathan Green, otherwise known as Nearest Green, mm -hmm. or referred to by friends and family as Uncle Nearest. And he had a side gig, this preacher, mm -hmm. as a whiskey maker. Only it wasn't him that was making it. It was Uncle Nearest was making it. Okay. One day, an eight-year-old boy shows up as a farmhand helping around. But what he's most interested in is learning how to distill. So Uncle Nearest, said, who's only a few years older than him, mm -hmm. says, I'll teach you everything I know. Yeah. They become really close. And as that kid grows up, he decides to, he buys the distillery from Dan Call and starts making whiskey. And Uncle Nearest comes in and is the first ever master distiller yep. in uh, tennis in that whole, well, honestly, that whole region. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was Jack Daniel. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And so the Jack Daniels family and the uh, Green family ha had their lives tied together for generations after that. Now, the interest, most interesting thing, that's the shortest version I can possibly come up with that. The, this is being made not by Jack Daniels, but by two other Tennessee whiskey distilleries. Yeah. And they're sourcing and blending. This is like, I think, 8 to 12 years old. I can tell you, already on the nose, it's more flavorful than JD. Right. Now, here's the most interesting thing I learned when I was researching this originally. This yeah. is way back in the day. Did you know that it's very likely that Nearest brought the Lincoln County process idea of charcoal filtering over from Africa? N maybe not him, but... Really? Because in Africa, they would use charcoal to filter water uh -huh. in the villages. Yeah. And he just applied it to whiskey. So he invented the Lincoln because County they, process. It, with water, it takes out impurities. He's right. thinking, well, maybe in whiskey, let's see what happens. And I don't know why, but he did. Maybe yeah. it was just a habit. But uh, that in, was the invention of the Lincoln County process. That's interesting. Right? Yeah. Huh. It's a whole it, uh, used in another category, shifted to a new category as an innovation. Yeah, pretty cool. I'm gonna tell you right now. I actually really enjoy the snows. There's like a creamy vanilla. There is a. I almost wanted to say banana bread, but that's too heavy on the banana, I'm and that's getting, not what I mean. I'm getting like um, I get the bready quality, but it's more of like a leaning into the direction of like a brown sugar graham cracker type of graham cracker. Okay. I like that. Yeah, I'm in on that. 
Yeah, I like the nose. My, Me too. My memory of Uncle Nearest, because it's been... 100 proof. It's been at least a month and mm-hmm. a half since I... So I'm going from memory. My impression was, and we'll see if I, it still holds up, because different time of day, all those things could affect my perception of the whiskey. But I remember it being, oh, those are nice flavors. The ethanol layer is a little bit too prominent. Hmm. I sense the alcohol too much. In the taste or the nose? In the taste. Okay. I really like the nose. Yeah, this nose is buttery and yeah. mar- and charred marshmallow. And it's uh, and graham cracker. It's 100 proof, 50%. Brown sugar. No, I'm not. I don't know that I'm getting an ethanol bite on this. I'm getting a little biting note, but I, guess, I don't know that I would prescribe it to ethanol. See, for me, this feels, and I already feel it in the throat right here. Hmm. Right here, bam, yeah. It's it's fifty percent. It's by no means a low proof, right? But it dings me the way that a cask strength typically dings me. Mm. Which, you know, that's that's uh, doesn't ruin the experience for me. I've had plenty of experiences with really high proof stuff, but I feel more heat from this fifty percent whiskey. Than I, I feel typically what you do. mean. I think. Yeah, I think I would call it medicinal right there. It's got that sort of lingering. Uh, uh, menthol almost medicinal yeah. and it, numbing it, effect. About three fourths of the way, it shifts in and it carries through the finish. It's got the aftertaste for me. The lingering wait at uh, sixty seconds aftertaste mm-hmm. is this sort of like dry wood note. And now second approach, that classic bourbon cherry shows up. Mm. Mm. It's I'm actually going to try a sweeter more my water. Yeah, I'm gonna try a little bit of water. Since Very it's little. Fifty. Bit. A wee bit. That let go of like a, it's like a little bit of a toastiness in there. Mm-hmm. Ooh. I actually like that. It gets a little more astringent, but I actually like that better. This is the comparison between the two Woodfords we did yesterday. The first sip, sweet, add a little water, it turns into that drier tannic. I like it without the water. Mm. Give me a, a little bit more because that ethanol. Oh, yeah. Oh, we don't Give have any ice. No, it got turned off. I was trying to turn it on this morning, but it didn't. This, this is the kind of, because we often say bourbon as a category rule of thumb very often holds up really well to ice. I want to try with the bourbon. Needs to with the ice rock. Well, the Canadians forgot to fly down and turn their machine on. (sighs) Just think cold thoughts. I like this. It's there's something slightly different about it. I wonder what the mash bill is. So I didn't. This I think I've had a lot of fifty percent whiskeys mm-hmm. that feel like there's heavier, thicker, lower note flavors. Right. These are going to be like mid range, and then the ethanol ding makes it tickling the high notes, tickling shininess. I don't have like any of the bassy, heavy, mm. thick like things like you know. Dark, heavy, burnt molasses, really old oak. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but it's the definitely notes that are a there, mid-palate whiskey. Yeah. yeah, but the notes that are there are nicely balanced. Mm-hmm. The only thing that, at least with a neat pour, that I'm not in love with is, uh, and I think memory served correct, whenever you get about three quarters of the way through and into the finish, there's just a little bit more of the heat than I typically get, uh, than I typically get uh, from whiskeys that are in this proof range. Coming back, the bready notes on that come back to the front again for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway. And the thing that was buried under a lot of these other earlier flavors we were noting, that's starting to rise to the top, the cherry that was starting to make an appearance, mm-hmm. that becomes more and more prominent. Mm, 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 mm. That's pretty good. That's pretty damn good. Michael, Mike Bartley. Hey, Rex and Daniel, I'm trying to get into scotch. I'm looking to start with the sea, ocean, sweet, oaky side of the region. And to give you a little idea, I've had King's Country peated bourbon and loved it. It's so good. And Monkey Shoulder was uneventful for me. I drink higher proof bourbon mm. usually, but not always. Hope you can help. Uh, I usually add punctuation to these, but it's nice to That's see you suffer going. a bit. Rex. <laughs> Thanks, Terry. Terry's doing punctuation. Yeah, he, is, he was adding it in periodically. That was sometimes nice. Sometimes he lets you, he doesn't. I thought grammatically we were evolving as a community. Yeah. <laughs> it's just Terry. Editing. <laughs> you uneducated swine. <laughs> uh, I would say try the islands, man. If you like peated bourbon from Kings County, which is really good. 
Um, try the islands, Talisker. Uh, try it for a Highland, Oban. Try Orkney, like Highland Park. Try what else would be up there? What's the other? Uh, either uh, Tobermory or um, Legic. Um, L-E-D-A-I-G. Yeah. And then uh, I'm now finding the most prominent note to be oakiness. Oakiness is taking yeah. center stage at this point. Yeah. So it neat pours. You know, you wait like a minute or two between sips, and you're going to find another layer well, taking center stage. And for me, it's not oaky. It's sweet. No. I have the water pours. You have the neat pours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I prefer the neat pours. It's pour. gone sweeter now. Dreaming Wolf 8382. Why is it when Rex says, to your point, I feel like it has the same energy as per my last email? <laughs> <laughs> to your point, per my last email. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Uh, yeah, it sh I think this was a... Big brand that you can find in tons of places. These yeah, days. yeah, it's everywhere. All right, so we did the thing. I'm super fatty. Fatty? Those fat, fatty. No, you with your overalls. Oh, look super fatty with short legs. Am I? Yeah. Is our hipsters wearing overalls now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do. It's fine, fine. We'll talk about hipsters. Oh, okay. I do think I find it very. Very funny how many people refer to us as hipsters. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because at that point, knowing how I prioritize my physical appearance and yeah. my style, at that point, hipster has lost all meaning. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Like, if my wife buying clothes from Target 10 years ago yeah. and me not giving enough of a to ever wear anything else yeah. makes me a hipster, it's like, well, okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's basically a hipster, someone who wears clothes. Well, what if they don't care about their appearance? That's so hipster. What if they do care about their appearance? It's very so hipster. hipster. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, we're super hip. What if they wear work clothes? And we're down with all the fads. Super hipster. We're down with the fads. Yeah. Uh, hey, when are we going to do the proper 12? Since we're on this war path right, fine. We'll of giant it. whiskeys, you know, at this point, we'll do I, it think, on the next round. I think Conor McGregor just sold proper 12. Yeah. This is how far beyond the curve we yeah. are. <laughs> Did he? Because Probably, yeah. he made an ungodly amount of money. He launched the whiskey. People reviewed the whiskey. They drank the whiskey. And he, now he's making like hundreds of millions of dollars yeah. selling the whiskey. We still have not done a review for that yeah. whiskey. Here's the fight, he's stealing a drink. If you fight me, I fight for a friend. You steal me, you steal your liver. Sorry. And if you drink. Now, you want to know how you can tell that Daniel's over an episode because you start, you start with a very interesting topic, a trajectory for conversation. And Daniel's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just waiting for the toast. Anyway. So that's how you know. Yeah. So here's the fighting, stealing, and drinking. <laughs> fight, fight for friends. You steal them and you steal <laughs> And another thing is, uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> all right, okay. and if you drink, may you drink, drink with us. <laughs>